Well, folks, welcome to Coffee with Job. Uh, we've bit windy, so I hope you can hear me okay. Um, and nice and sunny. Uh, we're for, for this week, it's a bit of a change. And it's sunny because we're coming on to discuss Job chapter 19, verse 25. I know that my Redeemer lives, and in the end he will stand on the earth. And if I could sing, and if I could sing opera, I would sing the Handel version of this. We've got some music at the end, but it's not that, but well worth going to listen to. So, how can we have a relationship with God who seems to permit or cause the innocent to suffer? That, that's Job's question. Job's loves God, but he's confused and hurt by the fact that God appears to be his enemy. He knows he needs a redeemer. We've seen that already. Chapter 16, verse 19. Even now my witness is in heaven. My advocate is on high. He sacrificed for his children. In, in chapter 9, verse 33, he said, if only there was someone. And Job knows what kind of redeemer he needs. He needs God. But this is the great thing. This is the astonishing thing. It's why I say this is such a great statement of faith. He doesn't just know, hope that there would be a Redeemer. He knows that there is one. I know that my Redeemer lives. Now, there are many things we know or think we know that we're not sure of. But if you can be sure of this, it's really the, the best thing possible to be sure of. He knew something about the resurrection life. He knew there was a life beyond death, and so do you. God has set eternity in the hearts of men. He has made everything beautiful in its time, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And he says, I know that my Redeemer, and the word he uses is goel, which means it's used of the champion of the oppressed and as kin to Israel, the kinsman Redeemer. So a Redeemer in the Old Testament was somebody who provided protection or legal provision for a close relative who couldn't do so for themselves. Someone who had to pay a price to set a property free from mortgage. So for example, my daughter and her family up in the Blue Mountains just now are looking for a new house. And my youngest daughter, I remember, you know, could we be guarantors? Um, uh, when you go and rent something as a student, they'll sometimes ask you to be a guarantor. And you're there. You're just there. A redeemer is someone who comes alongside and something much more than that. Could redeem people from slavery or even from death or even the deceased from dishonor in, in order to keep them in the family. Read Leviticus 25 verses 47 to 49 to see what the kinsman redeemer was. Defend my cause, says Psalm 119 verse 154, and redeem me, preserve my life. Now, who's the Redeemer here? Obviously, it's God. God doesn't just redeem his people. He is a blood relation, which was the point of the kinsman Redeemer. Everything was dealt with, was within the family. It's like the Holy Spirit is called the parakletos. There's relationship as well as representation. Goel is used by the covenant people to refer to Yahweh, their covenant God. I will free you from being slaves to them, Exodus 6 verse 6. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. I will take you as my own people and I will be your God. And then he says, and we'll, we'll come to this. And in the end, he will stand on the earth. We'll do more about this tomorrow. But just simply, he's saying, st we'll stand on the earth. What does that mean? He'll stand on my grave. The dust of the earth is the grave. And this is absolutely a glimpse of life beyond death. Job knows that death is temporary. I love John 5, 28. Do not be amazed at this, says Jesus. For a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to life and those who have done evil will rise to be condemned. Perhaps this is God trampling on the grave. Perhaps this is the victory over death. Perhaps this is the resurrection and the empty tomb. When my father-in-law died on the island of Lewis, we went to, I think it's a place called Sandwick Cemetery. Or is it, it, was, it was just remote. It was w wild and windy. And as was the custom, it was the men who were at the graveside. And I just, I'll never forget the minister standing there in his black 
frock coat and dog collar and most of the men in black. And he was standing there and after we prayed, he said, well, boys, there'll be some party in this graveyard on Resurrection Day. And I thought, wow, yeah. Let me leave you with Garth Hewitt's wonderful song, May You Live to Dance on Your Own Grave. That's what Job's talking about. See you tomorrow. Bye. Die to rise with the sun.